Hi, welcome to today's video on operating our new IC Sense NMEA 2000 instrument system. This video is applicable to all of the IC Sense packs. So, if you have the power pack, which consists of the uh, speed, depth, and temperature transducer, plus the IC Sense box, um, or you have the yacht pack, which is the IC Sense box, the depth and speed transducer, and the wind transducer then this video is applicable to those packs. And also, if you're using just the IC Sense with an existing uh, NMEA 2000 instrument system, then also this, this video is for you. Uh, here's a typical uh, diagram of how the IC Sense would be connected to an NMEA 2000 network and providing a, a wireless interface to your mobile devices. So any mobile device that has a modern web browser on it will be able to access the IC Sense and you'll get on that uh, device the home page shown of the IC Sense in your browser and from the home page you can go to different pages of, of instrument data. Um, some of this uh, obviously if for instance you don't have a wind transducer on your NMEA 2000 network then there'll be no wind data in the wind page but assuming that you've got a, a complete NMEA 2000 network with lots of instrument data on it then these pages I'm going to show you now will come up on your system. So let's start with the speed and depth page. Um, so anyone who's had a speed and depth instrument in the past will be familiar with these displays. You've got boat speed there in knots, you've got depth and the S there means it's below the surface. So that's depth below the surface. I'll show you how you can set that to show depth below transduce or depth below keel. Um, you've got the seawater temperature coming from the uh, speed, depth and temp transducer and you've got the trip log um, shown there. So on each of these pages um, you can configure them pretty much to your heart's content. So the four data boxes here are the defaults but if I want to add some data boxes or change what's in them I just click on the uh, padlock here and you'll see these so every data box that can be changed or configured has one of these spanner icons in them. And you just pick, so say let's for instance you didn't want to see water temperature, you wanted let's say the total log. You just select that um, from the data drop down menu and close that. And now when I go back it's changed so you've got uh, instead of sea water temperature you've got the total log distance shown there. Uh, conversely if I want to add a data box I can go to any of these four positions below and uh, click on the icon, display the gauge, and let's say, well, we'll leave it there. So, I mean, you can, you've got the same drop down list, but let's, let's show you we want the stopwatch. Um, then, now when I click on the padlock, you'll see that I have a new data box appear a stopwatch uh, data box which I can start, stop and reset using the, the buttons below the data box. So a, a very flexible, um, customizable uh, page layout there. Uh, other things that you can do, for instance, I mentioned about the different types of depth, we can change the depth offset. So if I click on the little uh, settings icon there, so at the moment it's a positive depth offset, so that means it's it's taking its uh, distance from the to the waterline. Um, but if I put made that a negative, then it would become the depth below the keel. So if the keel was 1.5 meters below the where the transducer is mounted, then I set that. And now when I go back, you'll note that it's a, a minus 1.5 meter uh, depth value shown there now, uh, instead of the positive one that was shown earlier. And uh, so that's, oh, and also if I wanted to, let's say, reset the trip log, I can do that again by clicking the padlock, going to the cogwheel, and now I get this little pop-up saying, uh, do I want to reset? Yes, I do. So I hit OK. And now when I go back, you'll find that the trip log has been zeroed. So that's the, the, the speed. I mean, there's lots of other things that you can, can do to that, add data boxes that you can add. I think I've given you there an idea of, of how you can configure those those data boxes. So let's have a look at some of the other other pages. So if you're using um, the IC Sense with one of our packs, then you'll have got the the depth, speed, and temperature uh, transducer, which has its own pitch and roll sensor inside. Um, and so you'll have these this extra display where it shows the. If I just move the transducer here, you'll see that as you start to heal, 
it shows the angle of heel there and also as I rock the transducer backwards the forge you'll see the pitch angle there so obviously when you're um, tacking and you want to see what your heel angle is then you can use this page um, and then the pitch as well you know if seeing giving gives you the maximum and minimum values here so you get a good feel for how rough the conditions were when you were out sailing um, from those values now chances are that you when you installed the transducer you weren't able to get it 100% uh, vertical so it has the facility to, to calibrate here so what we do is on a calm day with the boat alongside the dock um, in as calm waters as possible you'd click on the padlock then click the settings icon and then you can remove any of the offsets so what we'll do there is hit start you get this little animation showing you that the calibration is taking place and then when it's all finished the pitch and the roll are zeroed um, and that's all you need to do to get an accurate pitch and roll uh, values so let's go back show you some of the other pages uh, I'll come on to the settings page in a minute but multi now this is really designed as a, as a sort of a general purpose um, display page where again you can configure it and you've got all of the extra data boxes that you can do. Uh, the main difference between this and the speed page is that you can, you've got a much longer list of available um, data sources. So if we click on that now, you'll see not just the speed and depth type of uh, things, but you've got all the heading, you've got all the waypoint navigation data, um, you can have the lat long, local time. So a much longer list of, of available uh, data boxes on this page. So show you that uh, so let's let's say we want to add down the bottom here we want to have uh, ETA to waypoint we can have that turn the gauge on and now when I click the padlock it gives us now the ETA to, to waypoint um, uh, and the uh, waypoint is best I've set that up on my multifunction display and that's what's providing the, the data They're just a simple go-to um, you've also got a timer here where you can set a five minute, 10 minute uh, race timer, or you can set a one, two or four hour um, watch uh, timer, um, which will keep that uh, going. So let's go back. So that was the multi page. You've got the wind page. Assuming you've got a wind transducer on the NMA 2000 network. And what we've done here is we've given you two gauges. We've given you the full 360 degree uh, apparent wind gauge and a close hauled uh, gauge as well for, for that giving that magnified wind uh, for when you're tacking and down the bottom we've got the the boat speed shown there and the VMG into the wind um, useful for when you're um, trying to optimize your your tacking angle so again just like the other pages you can customize these data boxes here so if you didn't want VMG you wanted something else then you can have that uh, selected there um, the you can also have true wind and even if you haven't got the true wind calculated on the network the um, IC sense will calculate the true wind from the uh, available data um, so let's change that to true wind and the close haul now will also be showing the true wind angle so always the close haul always reflects what the uh, whether it's apparent or true on the main wind gauge um, so that's that's the wind um, display you got the wind speed in the in the box there so coming to the end of the pages now so the last page um, is the navigation page and as I said I've set up a, a go-to waypoint on my MFD uh, and it's showing us now uh, you've got the waypoint name here, just called end on the, on the MFD. But if you've given the waypoint a name, it would it would display that here. You've got a, uh, a steering a sort of a, a steering indicator here, so the the red shows that you're off course uh, to port, and the green arrow here is showing that you need to steer to starboard to get back on on course. And this is the cross track values here. Um, you've got also then the distance to waypoint. Um, bearing to waypoint and the course and speed over the ground from the GPS ETA to waypoint and the bearing between from the origin 
to destination waypoint, so basically your track line uh, bearing. So all of that information is, is shown on the navigation page and like all the other pages you can go in and change that to get the page exactly as you want it. So I think you'll agree it's, it's a, a very flexible and powerful uh, web interface for displaying instrument data um, on any mobile wireless device on the boat. Um, so great as a repeater or even as a, as a main display um, if you've got uh, limited space for fitting dedicated instruments. So I'll take you quickly through the, the settings page. So the settings page, um, I've got my IC Sense today already connected up to my existing network on the boat. Um, when, it, when you actually receive the unit, it's in what's called access point mode. So you'll see when you scan for wireless networks, network with IC Sense, um, the password is always pass, so the default password is always pass, and then the last four digits of the uh, wireless network name, so in this case E148. Um, you can change those if you uh, want to, but um, to be honest, it's the it's, um, biggest cause of telephone calls to the office of forgotten passwords. So, uh, you know, I always try and encourage you to not to, to worry about changing the passwords and the network name. Um, you know, the worst case, somebody manages to work out what it is and connects to it, what they're going to see, they're going to see your instrument data all the time that they're close by. As soon as you sail away from them, they'll lose the wireless connection and uh, and your data will be safe. So it's it's not as critical as, say, the security on a, on a wireless router for an, on your internet network. So that's, so that's the uh, networking settings. You've also got a dark mode, so um, for, for night time, changes it to a nice red on black display to protect your uh, night vision and so when you go into the displays they're all red on on black uh, let's go back to the settings uh, let's take the dark mode off um, You've also got for those of you that also want to use uh, IC Sense with your um, uh, mobile apps, so for instance, like uh, Navionics boating app, for instance, um, you can uh, receive the NMEA um, wireless NMEA data to that app from IC Sense. It will it will uh, retransmit all the AIS data that's on the NMEA 2000 network, uh, all the GPS data, and all the depth data, uh, and we will be adding more conversions and more data in the future but that is what um, certainly uh, the Navionics app will um, use all of that data uh, and other apps as well obviously with, that can support AIS data will will um, happily connect to that and, and read all the data from the IC sense. Um, you've got the, uh, the boat type so this basically changes the uh, boat icons in the pitch and roll so if you remember when we did the pitch and roll page it was a picture of, a, of a, an outline of a yacht. If I change that to outboard and we quickly go back to the attitude, you'll see now that it's changed to the outline of a typical um, outboard uh, open boat. Um, but that's the only change, just a cosmetic change of the uh, pitch and roll page. Um, what else have we got? We've got the units of measure, so you've got centigrade Fahrenheit, you've got kilometres, nautical miles, statute miles. Um, if I, let's put that to nautical miles. Um, we've got uh, short distances, so that's depth and uh, trip logs and things like that, so that's in metres and feet. Um, and then you've got speed, knots, miles per hour, kilometres per hour. You've also got a, a setting here. If you've got multiple GPS units on the enemy 2000 network um, which is coming more and more common these days you can actually say which um, it will automatically uh, try and pick the best um, position source so based on the uh, can address of that device but if you want a particular uh, GPS to be used you can manually override that setting and to see what devices are on the network you've got here a device list where you can see all of the different devices that are on the, your NMEA 2000 network. And it's the Garmin that is being used, uh, can, can address seven. That's the device that's been used for the GPS source in this particular case. So if you want to know more about a particular um, 
device. The green heart means that the device is currently online and if we click on that it will show us what PGNs, NME2000 PGNs that device is, is transmitting and the period between those PGNs. Quite useful for, for fault finding. Um, what else have we got? And if you wanted to know for instance the uh, go to I've got a digital yacht uh, I convert on here and if I wanted to know more about that device then it will give me all the firmware versions and uh, information about that particular device so it's uh, quite a um, complete NMEA 2000 um, device list there uh, oh, let's go back to settings uh, so I think we've pretty much covered everything. When, when you've gone to all the trouble of setting up all of the data boxes um, and pages exactly as you want them, you can back up uh, that, uh, those settings and those page layouts and it just creates a little um, backup file which if for instance you had to do a, a software update that involved a factory reset then uh, you can just restore that uh, configuration setup so you don't have to set up all the data boxes again. Um, if you, what else have we got? So, uh, talked about firmware updates. Uh, firmware updates on the IC sensor are, are very straightforward now. It's all done over the, the web interface. So, you would just, uh, if you downloaded a file from our website with the update, you just choose file, would just take you, you can, lets you browse and see where the, uh, through your directories so that you can find the file, the update file. And then once you've selected it, you just click update firmware or upload firmware and it will take about 10-15 seconds to upload the new firmware and update itself. So that, in a nutshell, uh, I've tried to cover pretty much all of the functionality in our, of ICSense. Hope this video has been useful. Um, look out on our websites for firmware updates, technical notes and uh, useful other useful information that we'll publish as ICSense is uh, used and uh, and we, we learn more about what people want to to use it for thanks very much for listening bye bye